We have Jake from Green Mountain Power. Hi, Jake. Oh, nice to meet you. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Brittany, right? Brittany. Hi, Brittany. And we have Ed. Ed, Ed Clark. Ed Clark. Clark. We are here in Rutland, Vermont today to talk a little bit about the um, energy house of the future. If you want to take it away, Jake? Sure, sure. Uh, my real name is actually Bill Jacobowski. I'm from the facilities department of Green Mountain Power. Uh, this is our Rutland Innovation Home. Um, it was, a little backstory here, it was one of, I believe, 21 properties in this quadrant of Rutland City that were considered blighted properties, and the city has a, a plan to rehab these properties. Green Mountain Power stepped in, joined up with NBF Architects, United Way of Rutland County, um, Nail and Green, obviously, and decided we're going to purchase this property and tear down the old house, which was dilapidated, falling in on itself, full of contamination, so on and so forth. House was demoed, and this is what you see. I think we've been at it now for a month, roughly. For what we know, this is a first, at least in the region, for a utility. So this is a big deal for Green Mountain Power. And when we're done, we're going to give it away. The reason why we have the thermal bucket is we are putting exterior insulation on the outside. We chose Rockwell with blue skin, which is part of your our wall. And we want we want it to be able to breathe, so those are great components. But then how do you tie your windows in? So we're going to go over some techniques on how to make that a little easier, yeah. make sure it's a little tighter. Um, you know, just, just kind of smoothing some things out that, you know, face it, this guy's the guy who invented it. He's going to tell you better than I can <laughs> yeah. on how to, you know, put it together uh, efficiently and make it, you know, make it more sure. Set it there. Flip it around. So when you guys apply the uh, the DAP uh, Dynoflex 800, you want to put a bead in the center, and it's really important that the next two beads that are on the outsides go as far out as you can, because you want them to push into the opening. That way, when your WRB goes to it, it can bond the Dynoflex and the WRB at that critical point and make a nice solid seal there. Okay, so we're gonna, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be tying the WRB into the. So this will want, this is the only place to seal where you want the WRB to be underneath the thermal buck. On the sides we'll overlap it, and on the head we'll overlap it, but here we'll roll it in good and push it in good on the seal. If you're using a WRB that's not a self-adhered, put a bead of sealant between the wall and it so it stays in good place. So that way this is a good shingle effect and any water that would come down over the surface and could get back behind it, it won't be able to crawl up in and it'll just have to keep shedding in a shingle effect. Slide this in there. Yep. Do you tag this at all? It'll, it'll set there with the ceiling on. So we usually just let it set there until we get all the other ones off. When you push that on, you want to push straight into the wall, or do you want yeah. to push at a 45 degree angle to push both sides in at the same time? I kind of just do both at the same time when I'm okay. doing it. Like this? Yep. Uh, Nick just asked a really good question here about the why we have the tongue. And the tongue is for strength reasoning. When we drive that nail through this opening, it distributes the weight of the window two different ways. Part of it comes back to the nail head, and it also doesn't let your thermal buck pull away from the wall. That way, uh, your load's transferred to the wall and back to the nail in two different ways, letting this product hold about 840 pounds per lineal foot. So, also with this shape, if you're doing a wood buck, you're trying to hold a piece, measure it, and try to nail it into place at the same time. Mm -hmm. This is predetermined depth. You just push it back the whole way, mm -hmm. and you're already set at the right depth. From this line out, there's a slope in the product. It drops a sixteenth of an inch. All the pieces have it. That way, you don't have to have a separate piece. But when your window sets out here, you typically put uh, a pan flashing on, so you've got a slope for positive drainage. Mm -hmm. This has already got that built in. So That's when we seal would. this all up, your end dam will be back here. And then when we use the DAP 812 spray foam, it's a polyurethane-based spray foam. It's waterproof mm -hmm. and it stays really flexible with the window. 
that's your back damp, so this is your yep. pan flashing too, so you don't have to add a, a pan flash into your product. Your coating's watertight. Yep. Yeah, it does, you can get a, it's pretty stiff, but you can get a little bit of bow out of it. That, that's pretty narrow to do it. We might even should have done a jam last. We might have to shoot a little bit of sealing into that one. I messed up your gun there. You can see as I'm doing this, I'm pushing the, the sealant back into the opening. Give it a good pull back. Make sure you're tight. The other R wall. I sold 100,000 square feet. Oh. Yep. So there you don't have it all over your fingers. Yep. Once that seal sets, you don't want to try to take that out. You'll, you're there with a sledgehammer and a, and a pry bar working at it. So now what we, once you have that done, it's easy just to take a block like this. Uh, you want good square corners, so just bring it in until you get that. It helps you to get really good square corners. It's just waste product, so you might as well use it. We've moved our rough opening over a half an inch away from the stud. We just want to take it at the slightest little bit of angle to make sure that we still get the center of that stud with our screw. Now, a nice little trick with this is you can use and usually you have to have somebody inside the house to make sure your window's centered. You've got the 45 degree seams coming down. You can line those up in with the corners and then just push them in. And then I'll tell you whether you're centered or not. You want to take a three inch buck, half inch of uh, plywood, so that's four or three and a half inches. You want to go at least an inch into the wood, the framing. So you need a four and a half, five inch. I don't think that window's going anywhere. No. no. As long as that's over the flange, that's over that, it's like yeah. shedding. Yeah. You gotta roll this into the window so it goes over that. Yep. What are you doing with this? I have you coming out onto the wall. We are going to have to put something over top of this because you need two inches of seal for the for it to stick. I would, I would stop it on the wall so you don't have a flat area for ponding for it to come in. You know, if. It's not going to happen here, but general no, building start, purposes. Have cell phone. Yeah, roll it up the wall. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then do yeah. what on the side? Yeah, no, I worked right here. Just in case the it's easy. Yeah. 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 But you, you got to be spiked. Kind of what else is really cool about this house is it, it's not only just a house that we're giving away, but it, it, it's it's also a benchmark for what we're hoping to strive for in the future for how we build homes. Uh, keep